after you've created your models and added some lighting, the next step is to apply materials and create shaders. Shading is one of the key pillars of computer graphics, and knowing how to do it well will improve every render you make, whether it's realistic or stylized. I'm Jonathan Lampel with cgcookie.com, and in this 40 plus lesson course about the fundamentals of materials and shading, you'll learn everything you need to know about creating materials, all of the different shaders and cycles and EV, the basics of adding textures, the principle of physically based rendering, which will make your materials more believable, how to avoid the most common shading pitfalls, the workflows for rendering different types of material effects, and how to create custom shaders that are super user friendly. For a taste of what's in the course and how thorough it is, here's the first lesson to get you started. The rest can be found on cgcookie.com. If we could model every tiny detail of an object, all the way down to the structure of its molecules and simulate light interacting at that level, we wouldn't really need to do any shading at all. It's those microscopic and even submicroscopic details that control the apparent shininess of a surface, how transparent it is, or even whether it looks metallic or not. Obviously though, that's just not possible to model with polygons. So instead, just like with most things, we approximate. To try to achieve similar results, we use a shader, which is a set of instructions that tell light how to behave after it comes in contact with a surface. Rather than saying, atoms here are some distance apart from each other, we just say, let this amount of light pass through the surface. Instead of worrying about how molecules are very tightly packed and even on the surface, we can just say, bounce light at a consistent angle rather than a random one. From the zoomed out view that's natural to us humans, it's incredibly hard to tell the difference and it looks good enough. It's a clever trick that works extremely well and it's also really easy for artists to use. In the following videos, we'll look at how to build shaders in Blender using what's called a BSDF, which stands for Bidirectional Scattering Distribution Function and you definitely don't need to remember all the technical jargon. But do remember that a BSDF is just a set of instructions for telling the render engine what to do with the light when it hits a surface. There's a BSDF for every common surface effect and we'll explore all of them plus some shaders for volumes. By combining several simple BSDFs together, using the flowchart-like interface we call the node editor, we can make some incredibly complex, layered, and interesting effects. The final result of our shaders and settings that determines how light interacts with the object is called the material. In the next video, before we dive into different BSDFs, we'll look at how we can add materials to our objects in Blender. Follow along in your own scene or download the source files right below this lesson, and let's get started. 